Hello, this is Mrs. Meckins, and in this lesson series, we're going to talk about how readers question the text they read. Now, I know you know all about reading passages and answering questions. This isn't new, and you're used to reading a little bit, and then your teacher stops and wants to ask some questions, and you guys look for answers and discuss them with text evidence. Or maybe you're not doing it in class. You're reading alone, and then at the end of the chapter or the passage, there's like four questions you have to answer, and so you do. Maybe even every once in a while when you're reading in class and even silently, and you'll say, hey, what does this mean? What is, what's this all about? And, and so you have a question. Okay, and all of that is uh, forms of reader questions. Okay, but a lot of those are the teacher initiated questions or the text initiated the questions. What this lesson series is about is how readers ask questions of the text they read. While reading, you ask questions and you answer your own questions. I want to teach you how to do that in this lesson series. How do readers have questions? How do you generate questions? How do you figure out your own answers? Because right now, a lot of us are just reading and we're just kind of looking at all the words, taking it all in. Oh, we might be having thoughts every once in a while. Uh-huh. Read a little more. I agree. Uh-huh. Yeah, that happened to me. I'm not just talking about thoughts, people. I'm talking about your thoughts or questions. Readers ask questions. In this lesson series, I'm going to teach you four types. In this lesson, we're going to start with the first type. One type of question that readers ask of themselves is a question before they ever read the first sentence, paragraph, page. It's the preview set of questions. It's, it's pre-reading, as some people call it. Now, I know this is not new to you. You've done this before. The idea where your teacher says, all right, let's... Let's pre-read. What can we tell about the text? What are you wondering? And the teacher kind of has you do this and, and says, what do you notice about the title? What do you notice about the photo? What? Okay, now wait a minute. Readers do this for real. We don't only do it when our teachers tell us to. Now, you probably do a preview, but you're probably not maximizing it. And I want to show you how to maximize it in this lesson. For example, if you're supposed to read, okay, class, read this, and, and, you, and you receive it as an assignment, you often immediately start to flip through that passage. You're trying to figure out how long it is. You're trying to figure out how long it's going to take you to read all this. Well, you know what? That's a form of preview. Yeah, you're trying to figure out how long is it? That's a normal question to, to seek an answer to. But if that's the only question, then you're going to be one of these readers, and you're never going to understand what you read. You have got to be leaning in and wondering and asking questions. Okay, I know it's way easier to, to lean in and be excited about text you get to choose. It's way more exciting to lean in and ask questions about interesting texts, topics you're assigned. But welcome to the real world, you guys. Miss Smeckins reads all the time, and she's not excited to read everything all the time. I don't get to pick what I read. I got to read insurance papers and tax forms, and none of that is exciting. I didn't pick any of it. But I still, as a reader, ask questions while reading. I still preview the text. I have before reading questions, during reading questions, and after reading questions. You know what? It's real. This is what we do. Welcome to the real world. All right. Fake it. Fake the questions that you got to you got to be engaged because otherwise you're going to just be looking at these words, get her done and you're never going to understand. So we don't just think in whispers of connections and pictures. No, 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 no. We also think in the form of questions. OK, so I want to tell you two Thoughts, two things you're thinking about when you're thinking voices whispering during the preview stage. Two things you think about. And the first one has to do with the icon. So you see how he kind of has like a like a bank robber mask on, right? Okay, and that's exactly it. That's exactly it. You guys, when you preview a text, you should be doing two things. And the first is stealing as much information as you can. Like a, a robber, a burglar, a thief. I'm not advocating that we're, you know, have that kind of career, but you have to act like that as a reader before you read. Yeah, you want me to put it on? I'll put it on, here we go. This is what readers do. 
readers before they start reading the first page or paragraph. They skim the text, in particular the text features. When authors, when publishers give you titles and photos and captions and subheads and, 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 you got to use that and steal as much information as you can. That's one of the things we do as a reader before we start reading. We, we pre-read, we preview, and we steal what's obvious. A burglar would never just go into some mansion or some building without having done a little intel, right? Survey. When are they there? When are they gone? Uh, oh, what's the door is always unlocked? What's the most concealed side of the building? What about the alarm? You got to kind of stake it out and steal information. That's what readers do. You have to steal information from the text features. Okay, now that's not necessarily a question. Those are statements, things you know, but, but when you preview, you do two things, and it's the second thing that leads you to questions. The second thing that you're thinking about when you're previewing is what's unclear? What don't you know? When you're surveying the text, what do you wonder? What are you curious about in terms of a word or a title or an image? Maybe you saw a detail and it made you wonder what? That, that idea that you have questions or you should have questions before you read. This is one, one of the ways that readers talk to themselves in the form of a question. They do it before they ever start reading the very first page or paragraph. See how it's a thinking bubble, you guys? Yeah, because one of the ways we question, we think to ourselves is before we start reading in the form of a preview. Okay, so now let, let's talk a little bit about this idea of previewing the text and what we learned in a previous lesson. I'm going to take my mask off just for a minute. I'll put it back on here in, in a moment. Okay, so do you remember when we learned about making inferences and, and the idea that we come up with a brand new idea, we, we answer something, we figure out something by collecting clues from the text, from the reading, reading voice, and, and putting them together to figure something out. You guys, this is exactly what we're doing with our reading voice and our thinking voice when we preview. We're going to steal as much as we can using our reading voice. What's in the title? What's in the captions? What's in the photo? What's in the subheads? What do you already know? It's obvious. Steal it. Okay, and then what does it make you think? What does it make you wonder? You, you have to think, and this is going to be your questions. Okay, so when we're doing this kind of of preview, we're going to use Miss Linder's silhouette head again. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to have our details we stole and what we're thinking about them in the middle. This is what's going to help us generate questions. This is how it works. Now, let's also talk about the fact that when you preview a text, you, you don't want to spend oodles of time on it. It's not going to take forever or it shouldn't take forever. And so what I would suggest is that in most cases, you, you set a timer for like, I don't know, a minute, two minutes, and you steal as much as you can. All right. And what you're stealing are reading voice details. And then when the timer goes off, you're done stealing. But you have to think. You don't just steal what's obvious with the reading voice. You have to think. So what are you wondering? What are you questioning about the details you stole? All right, Miss Mech is going to show you how this works, okay? And then we're going to do one together. So I've got my, I, I put two minutes on this, okay? And, and so when it goes off, I, I'm going to stop. Let's see how much information I can steal in two minutes. Then I'll survey, I'll think through it, I'll question it after the two minutes. All right, so uh, I've got the passage up on the screen. I've got my timer and here we go. Okay, so you got to look at text features. So why the U.S. Census tries to count everyone. All right, so remember, I'm, I'm writing down details with my reading voice. And so the well, U.S. Census is, is something about that and tries to count people. And oh, it's about why they do it. Okay, got it. Jot that down. And that goes here because it's a reading voice detail. All right, I'm stealing things. That's all. Oh, I'm stealing. I better put my mask on because if I'm be an information thief, I got to wear my uniform. All right, so now I lean in and I look at that image, right? There's nothing in this body copy that's going to help me. I don't see any subheads. So I'm going to go to this image. What can I steal? Well, I see United States Census 2020. I see 
this Department of Commerce, this circular logo. Okay, let me read the caption. U.S. Census logo on paper got in the mail with an invitation to fill out the census information online. Okay, so I've got uh, this official. It's a letter. It came with a logo and it used the word invitation. Got it. Write it down. All of that is stolen information. I did not come up with that. That's what they're giving me. I just need to steal it. Okay, there's another image. Let me first look at the words on the image, see what I can steal from those. I brought my family to America to give us more opportunities. So I'm counting them all on the 2020 sentence. census. Excuse me. America counts and opportunities. Okay, I want them all to count opportunities. So I wrote that down. Got that. All right, let me zoom out just a hair and look. What do I see in the photo? Remember the magnifying glass? Zoom in real close. Okay, so I see different people, different races. I see different geographic locations. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing um, some of them look like villages and cities. Okay. So, so I've got that. Let me read this uh, last caption advertising the U S census bureau used to encourage people to participate in the, Oh, advertisement, advertising. All right. So I have different races. I have locations. I have advertisement. Okay. So I'm going to add these. Now these are reading voice details that I collected. All right. Let me zoom out. See, Oh, my time is up. My time is up, which is good because I don't have any more details to steal. Okay, so now I have stolen what the author and publisher gave me. I've got it. I've collected it. I None of this is my thinking. This is all actual words and details, obvious things I saw in the photo. Boom. Okay, so what I've done is only done part one of preview. Previews have two steps. Now, like a burglar, you know what you know, but now you've got to think about it. So survey it. Based on what you don't know, what are you thinking? What are you wondering? What are you going to figure out? Yeah, just like a burglar, you've got to, got to have those additional thoughts. So now I'm going to go back to my, my stolen details from the reading voice, and I'm going to start to think about them. So I, I see this idea of U.S. Census tries counting uh, everybody, and, and, and it's the title says why the U.S. Census tries to count everybody. Okay, so now I'm going to think. Remember, thinking voice is yellow. Thinking voice is in the middle of the head. I see that, and I'm thinking, why are they trying? Like, it's the government. Why don't they just do it? Why do they have to try to count everybody? Why don't they just count everybody? So tries that's catching me I'm, I'm 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 questioning readers question before they start reading i'm asking questions that's a question why why are they trying okay then i also see this idea of the official letter and the logo and the caption used the word invitation it's an invitation the letter is an invitation to fill out this census and i'm thinking it's the government you can say no to the government that's an option huh I am very confused. That is very unclear. I'm trying to figure that out when I actually start reading. I'm wondering these things. Okay, so now I look over at this idea of America counts and, and uh, the census is going to give us opportunities. And I'm thinking, what opportunities does a form give you? How, how does that work? How, how can the census give us opportunities? Tell me more. I mean, I read that and I, I comprehend what it says. I just wonder a little more. This is my reading, my thinking voice asking questions. All right. And lastly, I had this this advertisement in the bottom corner and I saw different races and different locations, different geographic locations, possibly. And my thinking voice is, is got this new question. And I'm all of a sudden wondering, wait, if we're counting everybody, do we count Immigrants, do we count illegal immigrants? Would they want to fill out this form? Would they be nervous to fill out this form? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just wondering, different races, illegal immigrants. How does that factor in? Do you see how readers steal information on the outside? And they wonder. They put details together and wonder about them on the inside. This is what readers do, you guys. We preview and we do both of those steps. All right, try it with me. Try it with me. I'm going to jump ahead to my next slide here. And as you know, these details are not going to help me, so I'm going to take them off. All right. And I've got this next passage and I'll zoom in. And remember, only the text features are going to help us. And what do we have to do first? Steal. Steal using all of the reading voice clues we can. All of the text features steal as much information as we can. I'll put on my mask, you guys. All right, here we go. Let me reset my timer, my two-minute timer. 
okay? And, and we're going to steal as much as we can. And I'll zoom in, okay? I'll zoom in, and then you tell me what details you think we should be taking note of, okay? All right, so I'll get us zoomed in, and, and I'll show it to you as soon as I start the clock. Are you ready? All we're doing first is reading voice, stealing information. What is obvious? All right, here we go. Start. Okay, so you see vaccines, body, cheat sheet. Okay, got it. Vaccines, body, cheat sheet. I'll add it. All right. Okay, yeah, you see the photo. What? Who, who's in the photo? Just look at the photo first. Okay, yep, you got a young girl. Okay, you see a Band-Aid. Okay, you're thinking it's a nurse, but we don't know that's a nurse. Okay, look at the caption. What details? What words? Bandage, flu vaccine, ah, Center for Disease Prevention Control. I got it. I got it all. Boom. Got it right there. All right, wait. Oh, we got this comic. What? Okay, here's a tip. Let's read the let's read the caption first. Wow. Let's read the caption first. Expert on viruses and an artist helps educate kids about vaccines with comics. In this, she tells a story about polio virus, which paralyzed thousands of people before a vaccine was developed. Polio causes nearly cases nearly disappeared until some people avoided the vaccine. Okay. So just, just what are keywords, details? What do you now know? Okay, we got a cartoonist. Uh, yeah, okay. She, and, and she educates. Okay, got it. What else? Okay. Yeah. Okay, the, some people avoid it. Okay, now let's read the cartoon. Because of the vaccine vaccination program, I have lost 99% of my victims. That's the virus talking. For a long time, I could only be found in a handful of countries. I was afraid my glory days were over, but now we've managed to spread scary stories about vaccines. Once more, I'm on the rampage. I'm unstoppable all over the world. Ha, ha, ha. If a child catches me, I'm so bad, I cause permanent paralysis. Okay, so we, so we have this vaccine. We have victims. We have a comic strip about polio virus. All right, I got it. All right, let's zoom out because I'm seeing subheads, you guys. Let's just take note of keywords in the subheads. What do we see here? I see immune system protecting. Vaccines make people resistant. Coronavirus. Those, those key, oh, look at that. Perfect timing. Those keywords, immune system, protect it protecting against the virus, vaccines and resistant, okay, coronavirus, got it. I got them all, I got them all, boom, boom, boom. All right, so now remember, what, what were we doing? We're previewing. Readers think before they start reading the first page, first paragraph, they read the, the details, their reading voice is looking for clues. And so we steal information thieves, you guys. We steal as much information as we can. Okay, but now wait a minute. All we've done so far is steal. You understand that when we steal information, it's on green sticky notes because we didn't do any thinking. We just jotted down things we saw in the pictures and words that the author or publisher gave us. Okay, but now, now you gotta do part two where you survey. Now you gotta kind of, so what you gonna do about it? What you think about it? Now you gotta kind of put the pieces together. What questions do you have based off of these details? Based off of these details, okay? So let's think through this. So we have, where's our title? Here we go, vaccines, body, it, it cheat sheet. Vaccines are a cheat sheet. Do you have any thoughts? Is your thinky voice whispering? Do you totally understand what that means? Yeah. I mean, you might have an idea, but I'm kind of, what do you mean by cheat sheet? Tell me more. Yeah. And that goes on the inside of the head because that's a question our thinking voice is asking us. Okay. All right. So then I, I see this idea of a young girl getting her vaccine in that photo. Young girl. She was young in that photo. Who all gets vaccines age-wise? Who all gets vaccines? Is this going to only be about young people? What about the coronavirus now and older people? What? Yeah. So what, tell me more about, is it only the young that get vaccines? Is it only help the young? What, what are we talking about? Okay. Now let's, let's look at that comic strip. Remember all of the information in the comic strip and in the caption, it, it was about polio vaccines, victims. And, and if they don't educate people, some people start to avoid vaccines. What are you wondering? You have a choice. Yeah. You, you cannot be vaccinated. You have to educate. Why would someone avoid? Th these are possible questions. Why, why would you not get the vaccine? Yeah. So I'm starting to wonder that question. All right. I haven't read anything yet. And I'm having all these questions. All right. Let's look. Immune system protecting against a virus. A a a any thoughts? Well, think about your body. 
Your body's pretty amazing thing. And yet when it gets a virus, we need a vaccine. Why? I'm wondering, why can't the body do it itself? The body can do so many things. Why not that? Why, why can't a body's immune system do it? Yeah, that, that's a question I'm having. Okay. And then this idea that the vaccines uh, can become resistant, okay, to disease. And, and then this whole coronavirus, our, our current state for many of us right now. Okay. So what are we talking about here? What questions do you have about vaccines and the coronavirus, you guys? All right. Well, where is it? How long is it going to take? What do we need? Why don't we have one? Why do all of our other vaccines not work? Yeah, when, where, why? Help us. And, and these are our questions. You guys, this is what readers do. Readers preview the text. Readers don't just think in statements. They think in questions. And before we read, one type of question we have before we start reading is this idea of how much can I steal information thieves? Yeah, we put on our mask and we're information thieves. How much can we steal that the author or publisher gave us? And based on that, what do you want to know? What are your questions? This is what readers do. Okay, so now here's what I would like you to do. If you were in Mrs. Smekin's class, I've got one more passage for you. And I, in this passage, you're going to read about fast food, all right? Eating fast food. And all I want you to do is set your timer. So all I want you to do is set your timer. And two minutes, give yourself two minutes. And I want you to look at every text feature, anything not part of the main article. And I want you to do just like we did, collect as many details. What do you see? What is it showing you? What is obvious? Steal it and write it down. Then after two minutes, I want you to, to look at any of those details and just, do you have any questions? Are you wondering anything? Do you want to know any more? What, what questions are coming to mind? Even if you're like, I don't really care. No, you got to fake it, you guys. What questions come to mind? Maybe not what do you want to know, but what questions come to mind what is unclear. If you were in Mrs. Smekin's class, you would take this article, you would take the silhouette head, you would read, collect details, steal, and put them together to come up with questions. And we're not doing anything with the neck. We haven't gotten any answers yet. We're just collecting details and asking questions. If you were in Mrs. Smekin's class, that's what we'd be doing. But your teacher might have a better idea.